Hey Pixels, in this tutorial series, I'll show you how I built the fruit themed website we designed in Adobe XD into an actual website using Webflow, start to finish. I divided this series into three parts, so hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you know when the next video drops. For this series, I want to walk you through my entire design process that's not so perfect, but that's okay because remember, practice makes Excel Pixel perfect. First, let's color the background of our site. In other words, the body of our site. So I'm just gonna make sure I have the body selected. It's selected and I'm gonna look for background and I am going to paste the hex code for that really rich blue we had in our wireframe. So I'm just gonna paste that and there it is. Now I also want to change the color of the text to white because we have a dark background and you know we want to make things easy to read. And I'm going to set the size of the font to 16 pixels, height 1.7 as the line height. And then I want the body font to be Josephine Sans. So now that we've added our body styles, I want to jump into designing the navbar for our website. So I'm gonna hit the plus icon and I'm gonna hit layouts and Webflow has some pre-built layouts that we can choose from. So I'm gonna choose sticky nav. And we already have a pre-built layout that we can just tweak and make it our own. Now, I'm just going to open up the layers and show you how this navbar was built. So there's, you know, the sticky nav container, there's a sticky nav section, and then there's a container within the section. And then we have the nav grid, which contains our, you know, these links here, as well as this button, and then this logo or image here. Now, I am actually going to kind of reconstruct this. I'm gonna give it some unique class names and um, again, I'm just making this my own and making and tweaking it so it's fitting my design um, or my website, how I designed it in Adobe XD. So I'm going to, first things first, I'm just going to rename this container, this section, and I'm just gonna remove the class and I'm gonna rename this XOP nav bar and then I'm also going to select the container and I'm going to rename it to XOP nav bar container and then for this nav grid I don't even want it to be a grid um, I want to use flexbox instead so I'm just going to remove this class and that's going to remove you know the grid styling and everything everything that webflow by default applied and i'm going to so right now this is what it looks like we have you know the list items i'm going to take the nav logo outside of the list item so i'm dragging it outside of this list container and i'm also going to take that button outside of the list so now all we have in this list are our actual nav links um, so i'm just going to collapse that and move the button at the end because if you recall or i'm you know referencing of course my designs as i'm building it out in webflow and i know that the button is supposed to be on the right hand side the logo is on the left hand side and then my my menu items or nav items are centered in the middle what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna delete this gonna delete this list item and you know it doesn't look that great but of course we're gonna style it um, really quickly I'm just gonna select the body again and I'm just gonna make sure okay it does say white so it's probably some default styling that's making this link item gray but we can easily fix that so I'm gonna just select the link color it white because you know it's kind of bothering me it was probably bothering you too <laughs> so um first things first i'm just gonna grab a logo so we have our fruits logo that i exported from my um, design in adobe xd 
and I'm gonna rename remove this class and rename it nav or XLP logo and I want to give it a max width of 100 pixels so let's shrink it down I'm just gonna update the button as well so I'm going to change the label to say download and I want to make the padding on left right to be 40 and then top bottom just to be 10 pixels and then I want this to be let's color this white and then the text is going to be blue there we go and I'm actually going to increase this to semi bold all right so now that we have that oh I still have to update the link so we have several links so we have home definition let me make sure I'm spelling this right I'm gonna right click duplicate and we have anatomy we have nutrition and we have facts and then we have buy and that's going to lead us to our call to action section um and let me just fix the button again for pixels so scrolling down where it says radius i'm just gonna apply for pixels there we go we have our nice rounded edges all right so now we just need to you know make this like style this so it looks like an actual nav bar like how I designed it so I'm just gonna open up the layers because I always like to make sure I'm selecting the right things so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the nav bar container and I'm gonna scroll up and I want this to be a flex item so I'm just gonna hit that and now as you can see everything is in line as you can see, a line in this stretch is applied. So we don't want that. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually align it so it's aligned to the center. And you know, that fix that. And I also want the fruit, again, the fruit is on the left, the logo is on the left, and then the button's on the right, and then these items are centered. So I actually want this to justify as this description states, space between distributes evenly. So it distributes all the um, child items in the parent flex container evenly from the start. So the left hand side to the end, right hand side. So we need to also fix this because this is kind of wonky. So I'm just gonna open up the layers again. I actually need to select list item. See, it's always handy to open up the navigator because you can make sure you're selecting the right thing. So I'm just going to apply flex. There we go. So right now it's a list item. It's in line, but you know, we need some padding around it because look how squished it is. Well, again, open up the navigator. So I'm going to name this actually, let me rename this. And I'm going to name this XLP menu. And then I'm going to select an individual nav link and I'm going to apply 20 pixels of padding all around. There we go. I also want to apply the correct width for this container because I do have a max width applied to all of my containers for this site. So in this case, for this site, my max width is 60, 40 pixels. So now that I have my max width, I want to make sure that this is aligned to the start and then this is aligned to the end. I'm selecting the nav logo link layer. So that's the ultimate container that contains the logo. And now we can see the flex child properties. So I'm just gonna hit alignment and order. And right now we want to set the order to first. So I'm just gonna hit that. Let's see if that, yep, that did something. So now it's like really at the edge of this container. So I wanna do the same thing with the button. So I have the button selected and we're gonna move this last, okay? It's last. We love it the same, but it's last. 
this has a height applied to it. That's why it's not looking how it should. You're gone, 60 pixels. There we go. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to change this to RAMs and I want this to be 1.25 RAMs because our base font size is 16 pixels. I want the menu to be 1.25 RAMs, which translates to 20 pixels. Yeah. I have this selected. Do I have padding? Yeah, let me add 20 pixels of padding and then 10 top and bottom. So I actually want to apply the blue to the background of the nav bar, but I also want it to be opaque or apply or reduce the opacity of the nav bar background because um, once we're done the website, I'm going to add some, you know, nice little features to make it, you know, not boring. And I want this to be a fixed nav so that way as I scroll, it moves as you're scrolling the page. but. I want to show just a little bit of the background as we're scrolling, so I'm going to reduce the opacity to 80%. Um, okay, so it looks like there's a hover class being applied, so I'm actually going to click this drop down and where it says hover, we're not going to add a decoration. Instead, I'm actually going to color it. When we're hovering over a link, I want it to be this yellow. And look at that. There's a high contrast ratio, so it's accessible. We always make sure we're accessible on this channel. And then, you know, I'm going to look at all the other styles. So focus, I pressed focus. We can also change that. Let me add that to the palette. So we have focus, it's yellow, visited. There we go. See, look at that. When we hover, it changes color. That looks good. Let's move on to designing the hero section of our fruit themed website in Webflow. Let's give our hero section the beautiful design it deserves. I'm going to hit the plus icon and I'm going to grab a section, bam, put it right on the page and I'm going to give it a class name XOP section. And I'm also going to grab a container within the section, I'm going to place it within the section and we're going to give it a class name XOP container. Now I want to put some text in the container so in the design i have you know a really bold heading and it says the beginner's guide to fruit and then above it i have an eyebrow that says brought to you by excel pixel so i'm going to look for the heading block and i'm going to plop it there and i'm going to write it out the beginners oops Guide, guys, I can't spell. <laughs> the beginner's guide to fruit. Okay, now this is not the font I want, so we're gonna fix that right now. So I'm actually using, let's see if I pronounce this right, Yesiva Wen. All right, so I also want to give it the weight of 400. We're going to align her to the center and we want her to be 5 rem, which translates to 80 pixels and then 1.5 as a line height. Okay, that's what we're going to do for a heading. Look how big and bold it is, right? This is like, you know what? I'm actually going to reduce this line height to, yeah, 1.2 is a good one. I'm going to reduce the width of this container actually i want it to be 800 pixels max okay max 800 anything more than that is ridiculous so let's set this to 800. if you recall in my video where i'm designing this in adobe xd i kept repeating 
I want 120 pixels top and bottom, right? We're gonna stay true to that. And we're gonna apply 120 pixels of padding to the top of this section. Where is it? Okay, it's not their default. We're gonna have to type it in. And then 120 at the bottom. Okay, so now I want to add the eyebrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a text block and then I'm gonna write that eyebrow text. So it says rot to you by Excel pixel. We're gonna center her and then we're going to capitalize it. We're gonna make this all caps. And I actually wanna apply some letter spacing to the eyebrow. I'm gonna apply 0.2 rem letter spacing. There we go. Um, I need to apply those fruit photos, right? Cause remember there was like a banana, an avocado, a peach and a watermelon. So with this section selected, I'm gonna scroll down to background and I'm actually gonna hit this plus icon to add an image. So let's choose the image. There she is. And I'm gonna select at two because it is at two. Um, I'm gonna select cover. I have padding, but I actually did have a height that I applied to this. So I actually applied 800 pixels in height. There we go. See, ah, oh, that's what did it. I'm like, why is it getting cut off? Okay. So now this looks good, but I mean, this is all up here. I want this to be aligned to the center with XOP section selected. We'll add display flex, align center. It's aligning this child to the center of its container. So let me just preview that again. There we go. This looks so good. This looks so good. Awesome. So let me get out of preview mode and believe it or not, that's the hero section. See how easy that was? That was so easy. So you saw how I built the navbar and hero section for the fruit themed website in Webflow. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll show you how I built all the other sections for this website. I'll see you in the next video.